you're broke. I don't understand how you could be so irresponsible. I mean, it is astounding to me, really. I don't know what more to say. Jen? Yeah, what? Michael left. Okay, where did he go? I don't know. Michael Gary Scott was born March 15th, 1964 at 11.23 a.m. He lived in Scranton his entire life until 2011 and was the manager at Dunder Mifflin. Throughout the series, we see Michael Scott being incredibly reckless with his money, and that's why today we're changing up our format just a bit to figure out just how broke Michael Scott actually is. And of course, if you like this video and other videos we do, make sure you subscribe down below. So as I stated, this video is going to be done slightly different than the usual. There are things that we don't necessarily need to know about Michael's past and that just aren't really relevant. This is all because we know that Michael later declares bankruptcy. So what he makes as a salesman doesn't really matter because he loses all this money before then. But I will include a couple smaller things that might just affect how much money he eventually makes. We know that Michael Scott didn't go to college because he lost all his college money in a pyramid scheme, so he doesn't have to worry about paying back any school loans. We know that Michael Scott worked at Dunder Mifflin for 9,986,000 minutes. That means he would have started working there on April 6, 1992 when he was 28. He got his job as a salesman at Dunder Mifflin by following an attractive woman to the office park and leaving with a job. Coincidentally, he also states at one point that he once went 28 years without sex, so make of that what you will. In 2001, after winning several awards for being such a good salesman, he was promoted to manager of the Scranton branch of Dunder Mifflin. This position he holds for the vast majority of the series. And again, because he declares bankruptcy in the near future, we'll just be looking at the debts he manages to rack up before that. So any little things like Michael giving a bunch of money to Oscar's nephew for charity will not be taken into account for this. The biggest purchase we see him make early in the series is definitely his condo. A condo with a similar amount of bathrooms and bedrooms in Scranton today goes for around $74,500. But of course, we'll have to take the housing market into account. Homes in 2005 were worth around 70.07% of what they are today. So his condo would have cost him $52,202.14. We also know that he's locked in with $7,000, so we'll take that off of the total, bringing his loan down to $45,202.14. We know that he takes a 30-year loan out on his home. A 30-year mortgage at Michael's age essentially means that he's buying a coffin. If I were buying my coffin, I would get one with thicker walls so you couldn't hear the other dead people. Um, and we'll average that out at 4%. So in total, his condo would eventually cost him $77,689, and he would be paying an average of $216 a month. Next, let's talk about Michael's car. In the beginning of the series, Michael was seen driving a 2004 Chrysler Sebring convertible. New, one of those would go for $30,325, but Michael eventually trades his and Jan's car for 2007 Porsche Boxster, which goes for $55,500. We'll assume that by trading in both cars, they break even on the Porsche. Next, let's focus on how much Michael makes as a manager. In Season 3's episode, The Negotiation, we find out that if Daryl were to get a 10% raise that he would be making more than Michael, but also that Michael is currently making more than Daryl. The average warehouse foreman salary is $60,501. If he were to get a 10% raise, he would be making $66,551.10. So Michael would be making between those two numbers. For simplicity's sake, we'll assume that before the episode he's making $65,000 per year. After he gets his 12% raise, he'd be making $72,800. Now let's jump ahead a couple of years to 2007. On March 18th, 2007, Jan moves in with Michael and begins her crazy spending habits. During this time, Jan begins making and trying to sell her candles under the name Serenity by Jan. Which, according to Jim, smell terrible. A higher end candle, when being created, can cost around $5 to $6 per candle. We also know that Jan is making no money off of this based off of Michael's statement. That is a $200 plasma screen TV that you just killed! Good luck paying me back on your $0 a year salary plus benefits, babe! Judging by the state of his condo and the amount of candles and random things around the condo, Michael would be around $10,000 in the hole. Right around this point is where Michael declares bankruptcy. I declare bankruptcy! If he were to declare Chapter 13, judging by the amount of debt he's amassed, he would have to pay $184.67 a month for 60 months or 5 years. This would be on top of Michael continuing his condo payments, so we'll bump him up to $400.67 a month. 
So now from 2007 onward, we can do this in our usual format, and we'll be starting right from where Michael declares bankruptcy, so his bank account would be zeroed out. As we stated, Michael's making $72,800 a year as manager. We won't be giving him any raises through the years because he's proven terrible at actually asking for raises. And as a general note, because of Michael's less than stellar track record with money, we'll be assuming he's putting away 10% of his salary after taxes, paying off some of his loans, and a couple of other major purchases we see him shell out. So, since he declares bankruptcy in October, he only has two months to pay for that year. So after taxes, he would make $9,696.96, and after making some of his payments, he would have $4,888.92, and we'll have him put 10% away. The next year goes in a similar manner with Michael making his average salary. After taxes from that year, he would have $58,255, and after his payments, $53,447. 2009 is a very busy year for Michael Scott. For one thing, this is the year that he actually quit Stunder Mifflin. He, along with Pam and Ryan, go on to create the new, creatively named paper company, the Michael Scott Paper Company. In total, the company is in business for about a month. During that time, we'll assume that Michael is breaking even on his money and that any profit he made would have gone into the van that they use for deliveries. When given the opportunity to be bought out by Dunder Mifflin after poaching a bunch of their clients, Michael turns down the chance to get paid $60,000, eventually getting his old position back as manager and getting Pam and Ryan both jobs as salespeople. Another thing that happens this year is the infamous episode, Scott's Tots. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 In this episode, we find out that Michael has promised to pay the tuition of an entire class of students. However, he obviously doesn't have the money to do this. So as a compromise at the end of a very awkward encounter, Michael promises to pay for the books of one of his students for which he writes out several checks, each for $1,000. So we'll take that out of his bank account for the next several years, which would go until 2012, which is after Michael leaves Dunder Mifflin for the final time. And finally, 2009 is the first time we see Michael Scott's newest car, a 2010 Sebring, which new can cost around $25,000. 2010 happens without anything major happening, aside from us taking out his average payments and the $1,000 for the student's books. So coming out of that year, Michael has $16,363.86 in his bank account. 2011 is the year that Michael both gets engaged and moves to Colorado. Michael leaves in April, so he'll only get paid until that month. In a slightly earlier episode, Garage Sale, Michael proposes to his then-girlfriend Holly. Michael also says how much the ring actually costs, saying it was three years' salary. There's a ring. Holy shit, is that real? Yeah, they say three years' salary. Regardless of whether or not the ring was worth that amount, that's the amount he pays. And since Michael knows he's moving before he proposes, he would have sold his condo, and since he takes a plane to Colorado, that means he likely would have sold his car as well. A car can lose around $3,000 of its value per year. If Michael had that car for two years, the car would be worth $19,000. So from the time we first see the car to when we see the ring, 22 months pass. Michael would be paying around $450 a month for the car, which we've taken out of the 90% he spends each month. By the time he sells his car, he would have paid off $9,900. If he gets the $19,000 for his car and uses that towards the rest of his car payments, he would make $1,874, which will take off the total ring cost. Next, let's look at his condo. By the time he moves, he's been in the condo for 70 months. So by that time, he's paid off $15,120. We can subtract that from the total he owes, $77,689, to see he still owes $62,569. If he gets face value for his condo at that time, he would pay off his loan and still have $756 left. So now for the engagement ring. We know he pays three years salary, but he definitely doesn't have enough to pay for it outright. So instead he would take out a loan. After taking off the little money he makes from selling his condo and car, Michael still has to take a loan out for $217,644. If he were to take a 20 year loan on the engagement ring, he would be paying $2,603 a month. But that doesn't matter because we really don't know what he does after he moves with Holly. All we really know about the next few years is that he has a couple of kids, so we'll have to end our math before we get to that point. So let's look at where Michael ends when he moves with Holly. At this point he has little to no actual assets considering he sold his car and condo in order to get out of the loans he still had and to take a little off the ring. In his bank account he has $15,470.10 and he still owes $217,644 on the engaged ring. And he owes another $1,000 in college textbooks and still owes one more year on his bankruptcy. So adding everything up, or subtracting I guess in this case, we see that Michael is $205,173.90 in debt by the time he moves with Holly. 
But anyways, this has been 10K Bill, and thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like this video and comment down below what you'd like to hear me talk about next. And of course, make sure to subscribe for all your entertainment-related content.